Um, so today we are going to talk about no sew ornaments. I have two different patterns that do this technique in the store. Uh, the main difference is the shape that you start with. So this pattern's been around for a little while. It's from so many creations, I wanna say. Uh, they write a really good pattern. They do a lot of tote bags, a couple of quilts, but mostly they do tote bags, and then they have a couple of, <laughs> a couple of random uh, projects like this one. Don't make me laugh. It's easy for DJ to make faces on the other side of the camera. Uh, okay, so what we're gonna make, and I've I'm so, I've somewhat deconstructed my sample. This has been my shop sample in the store for years, and I it's this is another one of those things like those table runners where I demo them all the time, but I have one sample made up that's in the store. Speaking of which, after I did last week's demo of the um, the, 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 the the 3D tree skirt, which you guys loved by the way, I found the tree skirt, so it's downstairs in the shop. It's very cute. This is the folded ornament. Now I make mine just slightly different than it is in the pattern. The picture in the pattern looks very much like it's patchworked. I'm gonna show you how to do both ways. So see how these look like they're really flat against the surface and mine looks a little bit more like a pine cone. I do mine like that on purpose because I like the way they look. You can, I'm gonna show you how to get both effects, okay? This is a really good project to do if you've got some random jelly roll strips laying around. If you have three jelly roll strips, you can make this. So see how I've got a light center and then I've got sort of a green pop and then I've got a red edge. I like that the shape of this looks a little bit like Audrey from um, Little Shop of Horrors. It looks like it's about that, you know, bite you. The pattern has them a little bit flatter. I'm gonna show you how to get both of those effects. I'm also gonna show you how to make this be a design element instead of uh, like a fault line. Because at this point it kind of looks like a fault line. You can lay your blocks out where these are closer together. But again, since I was trying to get this sort of pointy effect, I slid mine further out. The pattern, when you follow the pattern, the pattern has you put them closer together and the pattern has all the instructions in it, including size and how many you need of each thing and all of that stuff. This project is more of a craft project than a quilting project. Uh, Martha Stewart is my hero, so I'm all about crafting all of the things all of the time. This is a great opportunity to bust out your glue gun. I do love a glue gun. The Balls that you start with underneath are foam balls like this. I have a few on my website. You can pick these up at Michael's or AC Moore or whatever you have around you. This is a three inch foam ball. I sell them in packages of three just because it's more cost effective that way. There is a very important warning on the back of this pattern and I can attest to its um, validity. It's true. It says warning. Ornament making is highly addictive. That is a true story. Because not only can you use up some of your scraps, there's no sewing machine involved. So that means you can do this with your kids. You can do it with your nephew that doesn't know how to thread a sewing machine. You can do it with your grandma who, who has shaky hands. You can do this with anybody. You just need an iron and some basic tools, okay? So I'm gonna show you some tips to get this effect to happen. You can glue on the ribbons. You can also glue on bells and you can put sequins and you can put, you know, if you wanna hang another ornament from the bottom, go ahead, you do whatever you want with this. It doesn't weigh very much. I've actually got my ribbons pinned on. Okay, so I'm gonna also take those off so you can see what's happening. So I have, a leftover two and a half inch strip of fabric. Again, if you have three jelly roll strips, that's really all you need to make one of these. This is a really good time to use this two and a half inch quilter select ruler because your jelly roll strip is already two and a half inches wide. You can just cut them out. And I'm gonna cut two at a time, okay? So now I have a bunch of two and a half inch squares. The reason I like this quilter select cutter 
is because if you want to do this with scraps instead, the quilter select cutter sticks to the fabric. So that means I can just cut two sides, take the scrap away, turn this around and cut the other two sides. Since it sticks, you can make a whole bunch of really precise two and a half inch squares. Again, this is a really good project for when you have a bunch of scraps laying around, okay? So we're talking about two and a half inch ruler and this ruler gets you there really easily. If you've got jelly roll strips laying around, great. If you have some six inch, well, no, probably not six inch squares, because if you wanna do them with three fabrics, you're probably gonna need like a fat eighth. So if you have some portions of fat quarters laying around, then get out this two and a half inch ruler and just cut them, okay? So that's our first tip, is use a ruler that's the right size for the project, which happens to be this one, okay? Next, my next tip is you, on the styrofoam ball, I don't know if you can see this on the camera or not, but there's like a seam. See that seam right there where the, where the foam was pour, cast, it was made? If you take that and see where that line is, and you put a pin in one end, and then you take a bit of yarn. You can take yarn or ribbon or just something that's small that you can see around it and wrap it around the pin. Then take the ribbon and wrap it around the ball. What you're trying to do is find an axis point for this ball, okay? So this way you can see where your middle is both sides. So I wanna mark a pin in my top. So this is my North Pole, here's my South Pole, okay? Cause there's where the seam is and there's where my ribbon is, okay? Following me on that one? So. If you just got a scrap of yarn laying around, that's a really good time to use that. So now it looks a little bit like planet. The pattern tells you exactly how to mark this out and know exactly where you're at. We're gonna find the center of our square by folding and folding. You can finger press this or you can take it to your iron and press it. But now I know where the middle of my square is. So now I can take this pin I'm going to take a different pin and put it in the middle of that block. And then I'm going to line it up with the pin hole I just made. Okay. Put it in the same hole, take the other one out. And now I know exactly where the middle of my um, square is and the middle of the ball. Okay. So that's my next tip. The directions, directions are going to, in the pattern are going to show you exactly where to lay everything out. But that's my next tip for getting everything lined up. The pins that I'm using are dressmaker pins. So you remember back in the day when your options for buying straight pins were limited to like these and the things with the big plastic yellow heads on them. But now we have all of these really amazing pins, right? Now we've got magic pins, we've got glass head pins, and we've got forked pins, and we've got all the pins. Now, if you don't have a box of these laying around, I have them and I'll have them on the sale today. If the pins you have laying in your box are 40 years old and they're no longer shiny, don't use them because they will leave rust marks on your fabric. And if, you know, this is an easy project, but it's still gonna take you time. So don't, you know, this is $5, it's totally worth it. So we're gonna use flat head, see the tiny little head on there? Flat head dressmaker pins because you don't wanna see them. You want everybody to think that you magically got this thing to stick together, right? So that's my next tip, is flathead dressmaker pins. Now, I forgot to bring them from home, but I have in the past made this project with sequins and beads. So if you take these tiny glass head pins and you put a sequins or a seed bead on it and use it as a decorating feature on this, you look brilliant. But of course, because I was home with stoned children, I forgot to bring those in. All right, so that's my next tip. Then we're gonna talk about pressing these squares. So I've got my squares cut over here. 
This is another really good time to use your Prairie Pointer, which I'm not sure where I put it after I demoed it last week. So, um, oh, here it is. This is a great time to use your Prairie Pointer tool because we're gonna fold our fabric. The directions tell you exactly how to fold your fabric to make the element you wanna make, okay? This is a wonderful time for flatter, and I'm gonna show you why. So I pressed that in half. She's not exactly flat, but she's close. So I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of flatter, and then I'm gonna come back and press it again. And look at how crisp that is. Okay, so I'll show you again. I will press one without flatter. All right, Patty, you're, you're <laughs> popping my balloon here. I'm gonna get to that. <laughs> okay, so see the difference? This is pressing without flatter. See how open it is? This is pressing with flatter. Let's I wonder if that's closed. why they call it flatter. I mean, you think? Okay, that's tip number three or whatever mm -hmm. tip we're on to now. Wow. It really makes a big difference. Look at the difference. Okay, so I would just, if it was me, I would take all my squares and I would line them up and I would just spray them all down with flatter and then bring them over to the table and press them. We want to make the sides of these fold in. You can do this a couple of ways. Now this is the dangerous part. This is not the part you should let, you know, somebody with shaky hands or little people do. What we're trying to do is fold these angles in. So I've got two tips for you. The first is these thermal guards. I like these for a couple of reasons. One, anybody's finger will fit in it. Give me one of your big fingers. For maybe mine. Give me one of your big fingers. Look, even DJ's giant sausage fingers will fit into this thermal guard. Except it won't fit back on yours again. Yeah, it's okay. It's rubber. So his giant finger and my little fingers will all fit in these. Okay? Also, sometimes my nails are long and sometimes they're not. It depends on if I broke them or not. So if you've got nails, they will stick out the top. So what you do with these is you put these on your non, or whatever hand you don't hold your iron with. And then you can take the fabric and you can get right up next to the iron with it. Because if the iron touches your finger, it doesn't matter. So since I wanna hold this fabric down, and then press it, and I wanna make sure I know exactly where everything's at, I can take my iron right up to the next, next to my finger, and it won't burn my finger. All right, so now, I've already flattered this, so it's gonna stay pretty flat. If you want to, you can steam it at this point. Okay, so what I've got is this cutesy little, almost origami shape square fabric. Okay, so I'm gonna make as many of these as the pattern calls for, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna pin them all. The other way that you can make these shapes, I'm gonna take these off, is with your, with your prairie pointer, and if you don't wanna use the thermal guards, you can use a stiletto. So I'm gonna spray this again. Oh yeah, it's a, this Prairie Pointer is a lifesaver. If you don't have it in your toolkit yet, it really is helpful. We're gonna take and we're gonna line this line up down the middle of our shape and we're gonna fold both sides over onto the metal, okay? You can use a stiletto to hold it if you want to. You can use the thermal guards if you choose to. And you're gonna take the iron and put it right onto the prairie pointer. Because it's metal, you can hold it down there for a long time and it's gonna get a nice crisp shape. The prairie pointer is great for making prairie points, it's great for making Dresdens, um, it's really fun for making this project as well. So once you get your stuff in shape, flatter it, press it and get it nice and crisp, okay? The Prairie Pointer is really handy for making these designs. 
So those are my tips for getting these together. Once you get them where they're nice and crisp, we're gonna come back over here in a second, but we're gonna pin these to the ball. Now, again, the pattern gives you placement of where everything's gonna go. But what I have underneath here is see how I have that flat piece of fabric that's not folded under the bottom. That was when we did this here. Then we're gonna take and we're gonna lay these shapes out underneath. The pattern gives you the placements of where everything goes. We're just gonna use this for now. And I'm gonna give you an alternate shape of putting these together as well. When you're pinning these down, you pin all the corners. If you want everything to lay really flat underneath, like it is in the pattern, actually I'm just gonna show you on mine, you can take the pin Put it underneath the fold here and push it down through all the layers so that the pin doesn't show. And then the fabric will go over it. So see how that one lays nice and flat but mine stick up a little bit? You can do that all day long. It just depends on which style you would rather have. But if you take the pin and you tuck it up underneath the folds that you've made and press them down, that tiny little head will go under the folds and now everything lays really flat, okay? Now the alternate way that you can press these, instead of doing them how I showed you, you can fold them long ways. And then bring the sides down. Get my don't burn your finger off tool. Then you bring the sides down. And what this does is give you a long, elongated shape. Now it's a triangle. And now it's, now it's a triangle instead of a square. Okay? So you can have different shapes depending on the style that you wanna do. So those are my other tips. Let's bring these back over here. Now, when you get these all placed around, this is a really good time. You know how after Christmas you can buy this really skinny ribbon for like 25 cents a pack? This is a really good time to use up all those skinny little ribbons that you made. So all I did was make some bows and a loop. And again, you can take and you can either run pins through it like I have, stick it in the top of the ball, you can hot glue it on. You can add any little decorative things that you want to for that. Now what Patty was talking about is exactly how mine is. I never got around to stitching this. Excuse me. I never got around to stitching this. This is a bit of banding. Of course, I ordered banding for this demo. Do you think it came in in time? No, it'll probably be here in two days. What makes this banding is that the sides are finished so it won't fray. This is meant for cross stitch. I believe this is a 26 count linen. So the ones that I ordered for this demo, I got some in green and I got some in cream. You can stitch somebody's name on here. You can stitch the year. You can stitch a decorative design. Anything that you can cross stitch or embroider, you can do on this little bit of fabric. So that's why I left mine open a little bit wider because I knew I was gonna use a one inch piece of banding. But see how sweet that is? Now, if you've got an embroidery machine, you could embroider this, you could make some freestanding lace and you could pin that on there. You could embroider somebody's name in your embroidery machine. And if you wanna do it like that, that's where my last tip comes in. So if you wanna do some embroidery or you just wanna use the fabric that you used in the project, that's where a bias tape maker is really handy. I know I've shown you guys how to use a bias tape maker before, but I'm gonna do it again. So I've got my strip cut based on the directions for the pattern. I've cut an angle. I'm gonna slide this into the back of the bias tape maker. When you pull this through, what you get is that the sides are folded in evenly. Okay, 
Here's some tips for using the bias tape maker. Again, if you use flatter on this step, you're gonna get a crisper, um, a crisper press, just like you did before. Here's another tip for using the bias tape maker. If you have your strip on your ironing board and you pin it down, this is ma these are magic pins, so they're heat resistant. So I'm gonna take my magic pin and I'm gonna pin through this end down here, right into my ironing board. Then I'm gonna take my iron and I'm gonna put it right on top of the fabric. Now, I see people a lot of times using the uh, bias tape maker and they'll pull it out like this and then they'll start to press and look at what happens. It presses right open. This is not what we want. When you're using a bias tape maker, the key to getting it really straight is to keep the fabric or to keep the iron right next to that metal tip right there. And I'm literally just gonna take the iron and push the maker with the iron. And so what that does is see how the fabric is folded right in on itself and you get a nice crisp seam along the whole thing. Okay. Now here's another really good example. This is pressed without flatter. And see how it's starting to pop up a little bit? You could use it like this if you choose to. But if you hit it with a little flatter and then go back over it with the iron. Well, and you keep it shut. Look at how much crisper that is. And look at how flat it lays. Okay, so if you decide that you wanna use bias tape, now you can take this over to your ornament and run your bias tape that you just made. Maybe you have somebody's name on there, or maybe you just wanna make it look like ribbon that matches. That will cover that opening really nicely. You can hot glue this on. This is another really good time to take these flathead pins and some seed beads and stick them on there and make a design element. What you can do to decorate these is literally endless. Anything that, that, that seems like might be a good idea, it probably is. And here's the beauty of it. If it turns out to be a bad idea, just unpin it. Just take the pins out and then the problem has fixed itself. So you could keep demoing things, you could keep trying new stuff, you could put, I don't know, you could put little cat bells on it or you could put um, a broken ornament. You could put anything you want to on here. Do what? Oh, completely. Well, if you've got cats, this is a moot point anyway. Although that is a very solid point. Hey, Julie, I'm talking to you um, and your cats. These aren't gonna break. So when your cats knock those off the tree, they're just gonna bounce. It's all fine. When your kids decide that they're gonna throw them at each other, they're just gonna bounce. Look, it's all fine. Okay? All right, does anybody have questions? Are we good? Okay, okay. So these are the products that we talked about on today's sale. First thing is the balls. You're not gonna get far with this project if you don't have something styrofoamy to put them in. If there's another pattern called the pine cone folded pattern, it's the same technique, but you use the egg shaped balls. So the ones that are more like oval shaped, so it makes more of a pine cone shape. Pine cones. Um, so that you can also do with that shape. Again, this is more of a craft project. So if you gotta hit up uh, Michael's to get some ribbons and some foam balls, you do that. But I do have stuff, I don't have ribbons, but I do have the foam balls. So they look like, they look like this. They're three inch balls. The package has three of them in it. And if I get these out of order, holler at me. Yeah. Next is the pattern that shows you all of the layouts and how many pieces you need and where the colors all go and all of those things. Uh, it also suggests that you have a hot glue gun, which I agree, and a bit of batting. I didn't bother showing you the bit of batting thing because it's in the pattern. It'll show you how to make everything go nice and smooth, okay? So that's the pattern. Then we have the handy dandy two and a half inch Quilter Select Ruler. That's the thing that lets you cut your scraps up and have perfect shapes to do this project. 
I will say that you do have to have a really straight line or else your edges aren't gonna line up nice and it's not gonna go together um, in a pleasing fashion. Next is the pins. We talked about the, pit, the dressmaker pins. These are brass, so they won't rust. So even if you make these ornaments and you save them for years and years and you throw them in the attic or the basement or someplace, then they're not gonna rust and mess up your fabric. There's 200 in this box. I will say these take a lot of pins. Like the pattern calls for 150 pins per ornament. So here's another solid tip. Your fingers are gonna get sore from pushing the pins down in. These work good for that as well, or the flat end of your stiletto is really handy for pushing the pins down. Put the cover on this before you start flinging it around, okay? So the pins is next. Then we talked about the handy dandy prairie pointer, which we have shown you all kinds of things to do with the prairie pointer. That is another nice little tool for that. Then we talked about the thermal finger guards that lets you get right up next to the um, iron. I like these for my hot glue gun too. I have multiple scars on my body from my hot glue gun. I got one right here on my thigh <laughs> from when I was about 14 years old and I dropped a glob of hot glue right on my leg. Protect your body. So thermal finger guards is next. Then we talked about stilettos. This is the Floriani stiletto, which I like very much. It's like the one I just showed you where it has a guard on it. So you've got the pointy bit, but then you also have the long part. The pointy bit screws into the long part. And then when you're not using it, you can unscrew it and put it inside and then protect yourself. This is the flat side. I said it would be really good for pushing into the pins. We have them both in straight silver, which is the Floriani one. We also have the Tula Pink version, which I forgot to bring up here for the demo. It looks very much like this. It's a little bit shorter, but it's rainbow. So it's lethal and fancy. So do I they think. make thermal thigh guards? No, but they probably should. I bet you could use your pressing, your, your pressing mat. <laughs> So somebody's going to get hurt. <laughs> Probably true. Then we talked about flatter. I put five different scents of flatter up on the sale. Uh, this is my favorite one. The fig one is the one I use most of the time because I just like the way it smells. I'm really sensitive to the way things smell. It, I get headaches really easy from perfumes and, and air fresheners and stuff like that. This doesn't bother me at all because it's, um, it's a plant-based scent, so it doesn't give headache. The scents that I put on the sale was I think everything but the scentless and that's only because I'm out of it. We've got 108 is Lacey. Lacey, Fig. Celebration. So Celebrate, uh, yeah, Celebration smells like the color pink. It's very floral. It's a very bright smell. Fig is very neutral, um, smells natural. Lacey smells like what you would think fresh cotton would smell like. Uh, uzu smells like oranges and, also got pineapple. and pineapple grove smells like a pina colada it also comes in scentless but I'm out of that right now so I didn't bother putting it on the sale um, a little tip about flatter if you feel like it's running low and you want to make it last longer resist the the notion to add water to it because it's plant-based and it's all natural it will grow mold there's no preservatives in here to stop the water from growing mold if the smell is a little stronger than you like add some of the scentless in with the smell and then the smell is a little bit calmer but again the smells are very nice so i put all of the smells up on the sale and then the last thing i want to talk about was the bias tape maker this is the three quarter inch option, which I think is probably the best one to do this project with. Directions are on the back. Basically, if you're going to make a three quarter inch bias, you need to cut an inch and a half long strip or wide strip and use that through the tape maker. Incidentally, this little hole, this little um, thing that runs through here, you can run fusible tape through here and then you could make your bias tape fusible and then you could just take the iron to it and you could iron it onto your um, ornament. Okay. So that's all the stuff we used in the video today. Can you show the pattern one more time and the pattern's number itself? The pattern, pattern 101. One. 101. This is the pattern. It is called Folded Fabric Ornaments by So Many Creations. 
I really do like this pattern. It makes it really easy and straightforward. I also appreciate that they don't just have these made up for Christmas. They're great. I just like hanging decorative stuff around my house. So if you have a style that you like or you're going to have a, um, a wedding shower or something like that, you could do the colors that you want to make. And then they, be, they become really nice like hostess gifts too. So if you're going to go to somebody's house for dinner and you know what color somebody has in their, in their home, you could easily make a hostess gift out of these. That's it? That is all. So I hope to see you guys on Wednesday for our Wacky Wednesday sale. Stay warm and stay dry.